Hey guys named Mo and it's time for the show. Everybody, my name is John and welcome to ADITW, A Day in the Word, the internet's favorite Bible study. Today we're going to be diving into Matthew chapter 14, but along with our study today, I want to give you all a little tip, or better yet, a little process that I like to use when diving into scripture and trying to understand it. And hopefully this process can be applied to any passage that you confront. Sometimes when we read the Bible, it can be really big and wordy and historical with all of these dates and figures and metaphors and names we can't really pronounce. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, um... <laughs> And sometimes we can read so much, but still walk away feeling like we've learned absolutely nothing. And so a while back, I started doing this thing where when I read a section of scripture, I don't worry so much about understanding every single metaphor or every bit of historical context. I simply ask myself a question. What are three things that I can learn from this passage. Regardless of how difficult or obscure a text is, most likely we can find three things that we can learn from it. And today, that's what we're gonna do with Matthew chapter 14. Let's dive on in and read verses 13 through 21. Okay, so I love this story. I love it because it speaks so clearly to our human propensity for limited thinking, even sometimes despite God's ability for infinite provision. But the first thing that I learned from this scripture is found in verse 14. It says, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. To me, the heart of God is laid out so clearly in this one verse. When God sees his people, his first gut reaction is one of love and compassion. Not judging them for their sin or laughing at them because of their misfortune. Regardless of the picture that some people try and paint of this spiteful bearded man on a throne in the sky, the evidence that we find here is that our God is a compassionate God who seeks to meet the needs of his people. Which just so happens to lead us to the second thing we can learn from this text, and that is that God is not intimidated by the magnitude of our problem. In this story that we just read, there are 5,000 plus people who have nothing to eat. And the disciples are running around like chickens with their heads cut off, worried sick. What are we gonna do? But God is not intimidated by the size of our problems. In fact, if he truly is an all-powerful God, then there is nothing that we could ever possibly face that would be too big for him. And so in the midst of all the disciples freaking out, Jesus doesn't seem to be worried at all. Instead, he simply says to his 12 followers, you give them something to eat. And that's where we find the third thing that we can learn from this text. And that's that God wants to use us to bring about justice. You see, the disciples at this moment are so convinced that the answer to their problem exists in someone or somewhere else. But then Jesus comes along and he says, no, you are the solution. I think a lot of the times when we read this story, we get so caught up in the fact that Jesus fed 5,000 people that we forget that that food didn't just appear out of nowhere, but rather it came from the small amount of food that the disciples already had. And so again, we see that the disciples are so convinced that the answer to their problem exists somewhere else in another place. And Jesus says, no, what is already in your hand? Let me use that to bring the miracle. In this story, we learn about God's heart. 
We learn about his power, and we learn that his miracles do not come from some far-off, distant, elsewhere place, but rather they come to people who find the humility to take what little they have and offer it up to God so that he can do something extraordinary with it. Mic drop. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching another episode of A Day in the Word. We are finally halfway through this study of the book of Matthew. We're 14 chapters in, we got 14 to go, which means next week we're having a bit of an intermission. Next week I'm gonna be answering questions. It's gonna be a Q&A, A Day in the Word. I'm gonna be answering questions on the Bible, on Jesus, on church, on faith. Any questions you might have, please comment them down below. And next week, I'll answer about four or five of them or however many we have time for. Also, if you have not noticed yet, you've probably been living under a rock, but I have a new channel, a vlogging channel. It's called Jorgen Fam. We upload daily family vlogs every single day. If you're not subscribed to that channel yet, you need to do that now. I hope you will. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll share it with a friend. I hope you're having a Merry Christmas. I love you all. Keep being awesome.